Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank yeah. you. So, so from I'm going, I'm going to explain very quickly. So, same situation, same questions, and we are asked to do it manually. What do you do? Okay. I'm going to explain what you do. You can try to play around. So these are the same scores, 10.10, 10, 8, 7, whatever. And then we have that equation that I showed you. So I don't like this. For that equation, I don't like when th this bar moves on its own. So please follow the four steps, like what I said. The step number one, hypothesis, stating. So you, you don't just say hypothesis is. So you state now hypothesis, you state the alternative I showed you in the slides already. Step number two, you do the critical region. So you do that by calculating the degrees of freedom first. So it's N, so we have 16 plus 16 minus two, that's 14. If you go to the back of the textbook at 14, and that is a two-tailed and whatever, we are going to get 2.14. That 2.14, we are going to use it to make a decision. Uh, Ryan, yeah. So that's how you make a decision. So this is a critical region. So any value that you're going to obtain that is more than that, we reject the no hypothesis. Any value that we get that is less than that, we fail to reject the no hypothesis. Now let's go back. So this is the equation. So this is step number three. So calculate T statistic. So it's T, M minus whatever. So we need these M's, it's a mean mean for each group. So to calculate the mean, you add the scores, 10 plus eight plus seven plus nine. So the answer is 72 divided by nine, eight, that's nine. And then for the second group, it's 48 divided by eight, that's six. So we are, we are done here. This one means that we are hypothesizing that it's zero. <coughs> Sorry guys, the population don't have a difference. That's what we're saying, that's hypothesis. So it's zero, okay. And then, we're almost done. Well, what is left is the bottom. Let me don't, okay, let me check. The, maybe there's, a, there's an important message. But let me, let me, let's, let me know that. Can you still hear me? Yes. Okay, yes, okay, let's, I'm, I'm moving, I'm trying to move fast. So we are done with the top part. So we are left with the bottom part. The bottom part is, means that the standard estimated error this one that's what it means so to for you to calculate that the first step is to calculate the the variance for each group so the formula for variance is sum of x squared of squared x's sum of squared x's minus sum of x squared divided by n it means that 10 squared 8 squared 7 squared 9 squared 9 blah, blah, blah. you add that minus the sum of that like 10 plus 8 plus 7 plus 9 plus 13 plus 7 plus 6, that's 72. Divide by N, by number of scores, that's 8. If you calculate that, uh, you're going to get an answer. I didn't put that answer. And then you do for the second group as well, okay? For the second group, you, you do the same. And then when you add that those two you, you you for the first one here and for the second one here at the bottom the degrees of freedom for each group it means that n minus one so it's how many participants again one two three four five six seven eight it means eight minus one so it's seven yeah and then seven yeah when you divide the answer is 7.14 so the answer is pooled variance so we use that pooled variance to calculate estimated standard error, okay? So the pooled variance is this one, 7.14, like what I wrote here, how I wrote here. And then the N, I mean participants, so divided by eight, plus the pooled variance still, and then like that you divide. So if you do that, we're going to get an answer of 1.784. Square root of that, the answer is 1.34. So that is the estimated standard error that is the bottom that is the denominator of equation and then finally at the end so you that mean that m m minus m m1 minus m2 so nine minus six that's three three minus zero is three if you divide three by 1.2 1.34 is 2.24 you do you remember this 2.24 in, in our excel output 
this is it. Then what do you do? Step number four, the last one. Okay, Monique. Okay. The last one, the last step, um, you calculate. So how do you, how do you reject or fail to reject? So you draw, you, not, you don't have to draw like this, but I just want to show you how do you do that. I said that that 2.1, the critical value that you obtained, if any value is more than that, we reject the null hypothesis. If it's less than, so this 2.24, it's in the uh, rejection region. So meaning that there is a significant difference between the, the athletes or whatever and the athletes, whatever, whatever. And then after that, you proceed to calculate the effect size. So there's a formula for effect size. Um, and then if you're asked to calculate the variance, explain to use the formula that I showed you in our Excel 